young earth creationists are carriers of hep A because every time I argue with one of them, I get <laughs> nauseous. And, uh, I tell you, why, why, don't we, why don't we pause for a minute? We had some people that have been on the phone yeah. for like 30 minutes. We'll see if we can't knock some of them out. But, and I'm sure. Because I want to clear a room for the young earth creationist anti vaxxer that I just pissed off. So yeah. we've got Patrick in Nashville. You still there? Yeah, I'm here. How you doing? Good. How you doing? I'm doing all right. I had a quick question for you. Um, I've been debating the existence of gods. Like, I've just been kind of, you know, dotting around his own belief in God to mm -hmm. point out the, you know, the stupidity of belief in general. But he's a, he's a hardcore Catholic raised Jesuit educated guy. And uh, his father was a prominent surgeon. He used to reside over exorcism. So he's at the same time, kind of weirdly mystical about the whole uh, possession thing, but yeah, he's a hard guy to convince. But nonetheless, nonetheless uh, his argument or belief that God exists is that without unconditional love, God would there's if if I'm sorry, if unconditional love did not exist, then there would not be God. But since it does exist, that that is intimate proof that there is also a God or higher being. Are, are you sure that that's, okay, so, so basically his argument is that if there was no God, there'd be no unconditional love, and since he sees that there is unconditional love, there must be a God. Correct. Okay. Uh, I, I don't agree. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's an obvious no agree. I mean, it presupposes culture well, or religion. I, I, I disagree with the, with the idea that there, well, I, I disagree with it on all grounds. First of all, I'm not convinced there is anything such as unconditional love. Um, right. I'm pretty much convinced that love is actually conditional. There are, there are some uh, people who love people so strongly and, and f throughout their entire life, uh, but I'd say that maybe those people haven't experienced the right conditions that would cause that love to not be love anymore. And I'd also say that people will continue to profess love um, even when their actions contradict that profession. Uh, you know, they may care about you strongly, they may be concerned about you, and they may be uh, love in some sense, uh, but I'm not, I'm not convinced that, that there is any such thing as unconditional love. And also, um, I don't see any necessary, necessary causal chain between the existence of unconditional love, if it does exist, and a God uh, at all. I mean, it, it, that, that's just, that's like saying if unconditional love exists, then, um, you know, unconditional pixie fairies, or uh, pixie fairies, unconditional fairies, uh, or unconditional love fairies exist uh, necessarily. I mean, it's, it's, it's that, that kind of silly. You, how are you defining God, and how are you getting from unconditional love to the existence of God? I don't, I don't see it at all on any grounds. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, he's got the triune and all that, and he just stands behind, stand behind, stands right behind the Vatican on all these matters. It, uh, I don't know, this, this, this is coming from the same guy who's willing to, you know, disconnect from his children and entire sections of his family due to, like, how they happen to worship. Mm. So evidently you know, his love's yeah. conditional. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, I, honestly, if he even knew I was having this conversation, he would disconnect from me. Oh. Well, and, uh, I can save him know. the hassle. I, I can save him the trouble. I can, I can disconnect from you. So, oh, no, wait, the conversation's over. Dang. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, what do, you, what do you do when you've got this big, ridiculous, yelling cartoon who's so convinced that he's believing in something that, you know. You realize that there's some, there are some people that you're not going to get through to. Uh, yeah. Trust me, when we have discussions with people on the show, um, I, I will, I've had some lengthy discussions with some, some callers when I know uh, beyond almost any doubt that there's no chance that anything that I'm going to say is going to affect them at all, is going to change their belief at all. I don't do it for their benefit. I do it for the benefit of the people out there who are on the fence or who are confused or who are in a similar position but are more open to uh, reason and argument, allowing them to hear both sides of the exchange may help them make a decision one way or the other. I mean, I could fail miserably and, and strengthen somebody's faith, and that's, that's a, a risk I take all the time in these discussions. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a risk that I not only think is, is worth it, it's necessary. These, are, these type of conversations have to happen. They haven't happened enough. The, 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 the public dialogue and debate on these issues that are, 
it, you know, even if there is no God, it's still a, a valuable subject worth considering and discussing, if, if not for the only reason that there are so many people who seem to think that this is true. Somebody's going to take this as an insult. I, I don't mean it as, as such. Um, I, at sometimes I was probably at some point I was probably guilty of it as well. I know there are plenty of people who uh, defend their beliefs vehemently uh, because they're not quite as sure as they profess. Now I'm not saying that's the case for all of them. Not you know I don't want to paint them with all of the same brush. But also that some of them have come to adopt and change their beliefs based on their own preferences. You know there are some let's say Baptists who like to have a drink who decided, hey, I can be a Catholic and drink, so I'm going to become a Catholic. Uh, and that's not the case for all the people who do that, do make that transition, but it happens. And we are, we talked about this briefly on nonprofits, uh, we're very reluctant to take responsibility for our actions and admit that we're wrong. And, and Schilling talked about this um, with regard to uh, people who've been scammed by the, you know, the 419 scams or a psychic or anybody else where they, they just keep giving money over and over again. Some of them, even when they start to realize that they're being scammed, they now have so much invested in it that they keep doing it. Um, yeah. and, and we talked about that a little bit. I, I think denial, amount of investment, um, and just kind Fear. of personal preferences and not, not being resistant to change, uh, being incredibly fearful of change and uh, the unknown. What happens when I stop believing in God? Yeah, right. I, I need. I think you know, deists, for example, who who email me, I, the God of deism is, in my opinion, uh, like Linus's blanket. It's a comfort thing that they're dragging around with them, um, and I'm sure that now I've insulted deists as well. The reason I say that is because, more often than not, the argument that they give is this. Um, there must have been some kind of first cause, and since I can't think of anything better, we're going to go ahead and call it a God. Maybe it still exists, maybe it doesn't. It probably doesn't care anything about humans, but I'm still going to go ahead and believe in a God. And, and, and my thing is, no! When you get back to the point where you can't go back any further, the answer is, I don't know. It's not, I can't think of anything better, so we're going to use some God definite. What, what definition of God? What kind of God? What do you know about it? If you can't possibly know anything about this, what's the use in believing? Don't you have to know what you're believing? And if you, if you, if you, if, if you, I think it's a security blanket in the sense that, well, I just believe that there's some possibility, that there's mm -hmm. something out there, some higher power. Okay, uh, believing in the possibility is not the same thing as believing. Congratulations. If you're sitting at home saying, oh, these atheists are too hard-nosed, and I just believe that there's a possibility that there's some higher power. Congratulations, you're an atheist, because you don't actually believe it. I, I believe that there's a possibility an extremely slim one, depending on how you define the deity in question. Uh, but we're not talking about belief in possibilities or belief in probability. We're talking about belief. Do, is this true? Do you believe it's true? If, if so, you're a theist. If not, you're an atheist. Um, and I think, I think you know, uh, for at least many deists and the arguments that I've been, been presented in favor of deism, it's a security blanket. I, I don't want to give up on this idea of a god, and I don't want to sound arrogant that I know there aren't any gods. Well, congratulations. I don't know there aren't any gods. I don't believe there are any. Matter of fact, I believe there aren't any gods. Well, this gets back to this idea that uh, unless you can definitively say how the universe came into existence, then you can't say that God didn't do it. Yeah. I mean, the anti-vaxxers use that stuff too. I'll get back to that in a minute. But yeah. Um, you know, which is nonsense. It's it, that's that's like um, that is not how to think about a problem because you can actually rule some things out before you know what the ultimate cause of something is. And in fact, that's kind of more efficient because then you don't have to worry about those things that you've already ruled out. Um, but you know, we see this a lot with people, oh, well, you know, you don't know how the universe got started, so you can't say for sure that God didn't do it because you weren't there to observe it. Well, no, but if we look for evidence of something and we don't find it where we should, then that's a piece of data against this hypothesis that God or, you know, whatever exists. Here's some, th something that came up while I was watching TV yesterday, and I, I had to spin it in a different direction. Sitting there at home, think of any three-digit number and another three-digit number and multiply the two together. Now, I have no idea what three-digit number you, you thought of, so I have no idea what the answer is. But I do know some things about the answer. I know that it's not 400 digits long. 
I, and, and I don't have to know anything else about it. There are things that we can eliminate. You know, even if you didn't know what 2 plus 2 was, you know that it's not going to be over 100, let's say. We, we can narrow the field with some, not, not just estimation, but some knowledge about the way things work.